Welcome to the Next Level Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, best-selling author and life coach for ambitious women of faith. Join me each week to learn more about the strategies, tools, and mindset needed to arise from the overwhelm and create a joyful life you love. To learn how you can work with me further, grab your copy of my best-selling book, Arise and Shine, or check out how you can get your ticket to my next Awake conference or retreat, head over to juliannekirkland.com. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode because the best version of you begins on your next level of faith. Robin Ryan McDonald is a faith-based holistic health coach, proud mom and wife with a passion for supporting and empowering Jesus-loving women to gain true health while losing weight through her sustainable, grace-based process. She loves to help women ditch chronic dieting and disease for holistic health and wellness. She mixes her seminary background with her study of integrative nutrition to help women develop the energy and vitality to live out their unique God-given calling. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Next Level Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I'm so excited to welcome my friend Robin to the show today. Robin, welcome. Hello, Julianne. I'm so excited to be here. You love how I like Robin welcomed you? (laughs) I got that all, uh, all messed up, but it's all good. Um, so I am a new friend to Robin and she is new to my sphere as well. And, you know, I've had guests on the show before who have done really good pitches, right. To get onto the show. And Robin was one of those, like she was curated. She paid attention. She saw what she wanted and what added value to her life. And then, you know, gave that back. And I was like, this is how I think I can add value to your audience. And for all of you entrepreneurs out there, for you who are writing a book, for you who are, you know, wanting to speak on more stages or just increase your audience in any way, um, getting on podcasts is such a great way to do that, to reach such a a big audience. And I just want to encourage you to not be afraid to take those bold steps of action um, and to reach out to people. Also say what you love about their show and what inspires you about their show. Um, That is a, a moment of connection. I mean, Robin was like, I too like inspirational t-shirts and I'm like, cool, we're going to be best friends. It'll be great. (laughs) Done. Uh, (laughs) Because it matters. And she's got avocados on her, you know, screen, which is amazing because who doesn't love some guac? Um, Amen. amen. (laughs) Let's jump into it. What, tell me a little bit about how you got started on this sustainable health journey. Like what, what did that look like for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think like most of us, I care a lot about being healthy and and not necessarily from the standpoint that I look at it now, but as I was younger, I was like, yeah, you know, I'd read the magazines. I want to be thin or like, I'd read all the little information things. I'm like, eat this fruit and it's going to give you this vitamin. Like I just had like different pursuits and endeavors for me recently, what happened when I was in college, I guess fairly recently at this point, it's a little while ago now, um, in college, I had my first real quote unquote health crisis. And I was always, I, I was always a thinner athletic person. I did not always eat well. Mm -hmm. And it caught up to me in college, ended up gaining 20 pounds, but I also ended up with full face acne. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't just like a problem area. It was like the face was the problem, forehead to chin, ear to ear. And I, I didn't have acne in middle school or high school. I thought I had escaped that. And so I was like, what is going on? I'm 19 years old. I shouldn't be having acne. And (laughs) someone told me, you know, Robin, acne actually has a lot to do with what you eat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I was like, why would what I put in my (laughs) mouth affect my face? (laughs) Literally, I remember thinking that thought. And I was like, this person, they don't know what they're talking about. Of course they were hundred percent correct. And I went to the doctor, they gave me a ton of medications and one was for my face. One was a, something that I took. There's like a bunch of different things. Now I'll tell you it did work. However, what I was putting on my face, when I would go to like wipe my hands on a towel after applying it, it was bleaching the towel. And I was like, you know, (laughs) I don't know if I want to keep putting this on my face. And so then I decided to go 
quote unquote, cold turkey with the acne medication. And then of course the acne started to come back and I was like, ah, so I was in this like place where I'm like, I don't want acne, but I also don't want to be bleaching my face. And so I started to do more research. Two bad situations. Do I want? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Acne bleached face. Like, will the vanity win out? Yeah. (laughs) it It was tough. And so I ended up doing a little bit more research and I learned that what you eat does have a huge impact on your face, your overall health, your hormones, your gut health. So I started to change my diet. I started to do research and eventually long story short, I did go and study nutrition. I did get my certification. I did pursue that further because I saw this transformation in myself where I lost the weight. I cleared up my skin. And I also began to make those connections between diet, health, and what health enabled you to do because I started to see the deterioration of health of my grandparents and my grandparents, the most precious people talk about prayer warriors, talk about kingdom people. These were precious, precious individuals. And they started to have the full gamut. It was diabetes, heart disease, cancer, dementia, all just across my little grandparent group. And I realized that if they had been given encouragement, instruction, education on what to eat earlier in life, they wouldn't have had to deal with what they were dealing with and they wouldn't have had to pass the way they passed. And that became a huge motivating factor for me, not only for my own health, one, because that's in my genetics, right? But then two, I'm like, I want to see precious people like them unhindered by health. I want to see the bodies that comprise the body of Christ, healthy, well, with vitality, able to live out that calling that God has given them to do. And so that's, that's been the fire under my butt (laughs) for the last several years that I've been doing this. Yeah. And, and talk a little bit about, um, you know, what's been required of you as far as your faith journey through this. Yes. I mean, we know I've, I've battled, like my dad died of Alzheimer's and like, Mm-hmm. It is really hard. Just like you, you were saying, you were like, it, I wanted to get rid of my acne. So I took these pills. It was bleaching my towels. And <laughs> I stopped it because I knew that I knew that I knew that's not what I should be doing. But then I took them again because I need to get rid of my acne. And it like, it's like we allow these pain cycles <laughs> to keep happening in our lives until something finally burns us big enough where we're like, okay, now's the time to move. So talk about as a health coach, because it is hard to go Mm -hmm. to someone who's coming to you perhaps, or just Mm -hmm. in your sphere, that's talking about complaining about all these things that are wrong Mm -hmm. in their life Mm -hmm. that are a manifestation of what's really going on in the inside, you know? And how that's required you to up your faith journey, to up your belief so that you can almost transfer that belief to them and get them to buy into that belief as well. Because at the end of the day, we live out what we believe. Totally. So talk about that, that faith journey for you. You know, I, I actually had a very, very recent testing of my faith and my health. So I would say I'm, I'm a pretty big faith person. It's one of the reasons I was drawn to your podcast and what you're doing. I'm like, yes, like speak that faith, speak what's possible with God. And, you know, I think there's a, such a major benefit to going through hard times. I don't believe that God's like, haha, here's this hard time for you. He uses them. Right. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity to experience the, the challenge and, and the, the stretching and, So as a health coach, I, and as someone like I just shared, I'm super passionate about having my own health and vitality to live out what I feel God's called me to do. I just had my second son last summer. He's now six months. It's going by so fast. And I had, I guess to rewind before that, while I was pregnant with him, I got this news and I, I'm very intentional with my pregnancies prior to conception fun fact about genetics, how you, the state of your health and your partner, when you conceive literally sets up the genetics for your child and like their entire life. Yes. And so prior to conception, I'm like, all right, like 
honey, you and I like, we're eating super clean. Like we're making sure everything's good. We're gonna have this ultimate super baby. Like, and so I'm being really, <laughs> into- <laughs> yeah. that, that's what I named my first one while he was, while we were pregnant with him. I was like, this is a super baby. We're literally conceiving like the ultimate child, like, <laughs> because I knew how intentional I was being. And my first one, no issues, everything went well. Second one, I'm like, we're doing it again. Like rinse and repeat healthy babies. And I think it was about mm, t- mm, t- between somewhere between the first and second trimester, I found out that he had this extremely rare situation. It happens in less than 1% of pregnancies where there's a two vessel umbilical cord instead of three. And I was like, that's not just a small thing. I was like, how does that even happen? I was like, all the nutrients, all the things like, I, 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 you know, I, I felt like I did quote unquote everything right. And I was like, how's this possible? And I'm like, and talk about stepping up your faith. And I was just like, Jesus, please let my baby be healthy. And so the, this condition or this experience, whatnot with an umbilical cord, it can go one of two ways. It can be totally fine. Baby's healthy and well, or there might be some serious health complications. And so I found myself, my faith was shaken. And I was like, why is my faith so shaken? And I was honestly upset with myself. I was like, why don't I just like, like, it's fine. I know it's going to be fine. I'm believing, you know, that it's going to be okay. And I realized that I was still, I, it was almost as if my faith had a little bit of a limp because a year prior, my dad had fallen sick. And over the course of 40 days, he was in a hospital. I had faith and I believed that he was going to make it. I was like, I like, I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what, like he's going to make it. And he didn't. And he passed away. And that, um, that was really, really hard. And, um, I still don't know why, you know, that happened. And, and yet I know that God is good. And I know that he was there with me amidst that. I know that he's still with me. And so here I am now, not even, my my baby was due a year after he fell sick, Mm. which also happened to be within days of my dad's birthday. It was a lot of different things going on there. And so I'm just like, Jesus, please, not this, please. Like, and and I've just found myself pleading with him. And I was even kind of, (laughs) and I know that there's plenty of scripture where even, you know, we have the persistent widow. Jesus does want us to plead with him. But I was like, I don't even want to be pleading. Like, I just want to stand in faith. Like, thank you, Jesus, that my baby's going to be well. And fast forward to when the baby's actually born. I'm very holistic and whatnot. And so, uh, which I guess you don't have to, you can be holistic and not have a baby at home, but I had the baby at home and baby's born. And it's kind of that, like, how's he going to turn out? Like, what's it going to be? And he came out he's beautiful. He's perfect, flawless. And I just had this mate. I mean, there's already a huge sigh of relief after (laughs) labor and delivery, but even more so that I could see that my baby was precious. He was healthy. He was well. And it was almost as if God did a flex, like a, like, Hey, I'm, I'm not only good in faith, but I'm really good. And so the, the midwives, you know, they, they cut the cord, they're looking at the, the umbilical cord and they were like, We've done hundreds. One of them had done thousands of births. And she was like, we have never seen an artery that big in an umbilical cord. And so even though there was only one artery instead of two and a vein, three vessel, she was like, this is, this is extra. And God was like, yeah, I was making sure your child did not miss out on any of those nutrients who were so intentional about providing him. Also the placenta, (laughs) I'm going to sound so weird. I get my placenta encapsulated. There's a lot of health benefits to it. And the gal who prepared that, she was like, usually a placenta yields about 90, maybe a hundred capsules. She was like, yours yielded 135. And she, <laughs> so she was like, this is the largest placenta and the healthiest looking placenta I've ever seen. And she's again, done hundreds of, of these encapsulations. And I feel like God was again, just like, I took care of your baby. I am good. I am faithful. And again, on top of that, my firstborn, seven pounds flat. This little guy, nine pounds, four ounces, (laughs) 
two pounds and four ounces more all than it. my first. Not all of it. <laughs> He's like, don't worry, mom. I'm packing it in. And I was like, that's why that hurts so bad. And <laughs> so all that to say, God did this major flex of just revealing and emphasizing his goodness. And so for me as a health coach, encouraging people in their faith to believe in God's design for their body, to believe in God's goodness, to believe in the power of of caring for our body, because it could have been easy for me to be like, well, shoot, I just put all this effort and intentionality into eating well. And there's, it didn't even, the, the things didn't even work right. Like what's, what's the point? Why try? And I've got clients where it's like, I'm eating well, the scale didn't move this week, or I'm eating well. And well, my parents had this experience and they ate pretty good. And there's just these things where we can step into faith in who God is and we can step into faith in God's design for our body. When we give it what it needs, when we treat it well, it's very forgiving. It's very responsive. It's, it's designed to be eager to be well. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it, we are the vessel talking about the vessel that supply, you know, like we are meant to be the embodiment of, of Christ through us. Like, what does that look like? What are we living? And we need to take care of that. You know, we yeah. need to do everything within our power and then surrender the rest. You know, I was recently just on the podcast I released, I think it comes out today, actually, but um, <laughs> I was talking about how, um, like, so often we try and put God in our box of understanding. We're like, yes. this is yes. what my reality is. This is what I understand things to be and how they'll work. God, mm -hmm. you just get in this box and you, make, and you make it work in this box. And he's like, yes, oh, his daughter, I don't mm -hmm. want to you know, and then he just totally blows open the box and he's like, boom, there it is with the biggest artery ever. And that's, that's how <laughs> it works, you know, but it's not an excuse. Like you were saying to say, oh, well, sweet. I don't have to do my part then. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. That's not what faith is. It's not faith is action. It requires our yes. part of it. And yes. give yourself grace when you say, Lord, I believe, help me in my unbelief. And yes. So, okay. I'm going to give you an opportunity to show some faith. Yes. And those are the moments that we continue to walk out. Amen. And it's, you know, I think of, when I think of the word faith, I think of the word faithful, like faith and faithful go hand in hand. And we think of even the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, like faith, as you said, is an action. And and I think that's one of the most beautiful things and the most humbling things about God is he wants to partner with us. He wants, he's like, Hey, yeah, I'm not just going to do the things for you. I'm not going to make you a robot. I want to do this with you. Come with me, believe in me, follow me. And, and yes, there are those times where I don't know where we're going. <laughs> this doesn't look good. This doesn't feel good. And yet, like you said, at the, at the end of it, when we get to those different points where he's like, look, this is what I was doing. Yeah. It's, it's powerful. It's life-changing. It takes us to that next level. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some practical things that you help people walk through when they come to you and you're like, okay, I don't know exactly what I need, but it's got to be different than where I'm at now. Yes. You know what? I've noticed this. I don't know if it's a for those of us who are believers, a thing, or if it's just women in general, but I feel like there's this all or nothing mentality. It's like be all in on your faith in Jesus, but the all or nothing mentality when it comes to making health choices can really trip us up where it's like, I'm either on or I'm off. So we're all excited to start out a new healthy lifestyle. You go to the grocery store, you buy all the things, your fridge, your pantry, it's all filled with it. You fall off track. And then it's like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I'm the worst. And we just flog ourselves with our words and our thoughts. And then we're, well, then we're off, right? And something that is really unique and intentional about my process, the sustainable health process, is we're vision-driven and we're grace-fueled. Mm -hmm. So we use what God has placed on our heart about our identity in him, what he's placed on our heart and our purpose to drive our motivation to drive our desire to make healthier choices, to drive through the times where it's like, I don't want to go to the gym right now. I don't feel like meal prepping right now, but because 
I know that my body is something to be stewarded because I want to have that health and vitality to get on the floor with my kid and actually be able to play with the toys instead of fall asleep on the floor. Cause Hey, I've done that. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to make these decisions and then we're grace fueled and grace is twofold. Grace covers when we, you know, completely go off track, binge all the chocolates or whatever it is. But grace also is the literal fuel by which we are transformed. It's by God's grace that we can choose to yeah. do the things. And so I help my clients actually be able to find that place where they're not all or nothing. They're excited to, as weird as it sounds, to have those moments where they fall short to learn from it and say, okay, I just re went really hard on that bag of crackers right now. What am I feeling? Right. Am I feeling really stressed? Am I really sad? Did I not have a healthy snack alternative? You know, whatever, whatever it could be, but we teach them not only the nutritional things they need to know, they get the workouts, but let's look at the heart behind things. Let's look at what, you know, how can you partner with God in this area? Is there actually something he needs to bring healing to spiritually? Right. And we work it out in that kind of holistic way. Yeah. It's so important. And I think helping no matter what journey that you're going through, be it in your business, be it in your health journey, be it in parenting, your relation, whatever it is, you have to come to this point where you stop assigning these stories and these mm -hmm. false meanings to what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, like where you're yeah. where able to separate out the facts. It's like, fact is, I just ate a bag of chips. <laughs> That's the fact, <laughs> right? Yes. Do I have to make it mean that I'll never be able to get back on program? Yes. Do I have to make it mean that I can't now stop there mm -hmm. and get back to what I was doing the right way? Right. Instead of assigning this meaning of I've fallen off, well, this is just mm -hmm. what I'm going to be. It is what it mm -hmm. is. Like the worst phrase ever, trust me. <sighs> <laughs> but being able to, like you said, give yourself grace and the awareness mm -hmm. of, okay, okay. You know, and, and also the awareness to be like, this is an area that I need help with, you know, so that your clients can come to you. Yeah, absolutely. Awareness is huge. And again, I think we don't realize the power and I guess the secret sauce, so to speak, we have of, of following Jesus and having the Holy Spirit, because that awareness component is if we ask, Hey, Jesus, Holy Spirit, can you please help me to be more aware of those areas? He's so pleased and happy to do so. He's like, yes, yes. like, I want to set you free. Yes. I That's want like, to bring you freedom. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know that one on your own. That's not how it works. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And so I think that's one of the most exciting things because we get to tap into an area of our relationship with God that's most likely not really been touched. I mean, sure, we pray over our food or say, please take away the calories from this or joking literally, you know, there's like different things we'll do like that. But it's like, what if I literally, you know, invited God when I step into the kitchen, just like, oh, like I'm feeling crazy, Jesus. Like, you know, like, can you, you know, can you give me, give me your grace? Give me, give me your spirit in this moment. And even when we go to the grocery store, it's like, oh man, there's the aisle. There's the aisle with all the snacks. Like he, he's so interested in being in those mundane things and health. The things we eat are, are there's an array, an endless variety of mundane choices that we can invite God into that maybe he isn't already in. And we can just enrich our lives with more of Jesus because we've invited him into that area. Cause he wants it all. He doesn't mm -hmm. want just like the big things, which by the way, everybody, your health is a really big thing, Facts, <laughs> <laughs> but it actually is a really big deal. What you're consuming daily and well, all the things. I agree. And I think one of the things that I love to say, and I think really puts it into perspective on how important it is when we look at the ministry of Jesus. We call ourselves right followers of Jesus. And I'm like, I'm, I'm interested in what he did. I'm interested in what he's doing. He, I believe it's somewhere around 40, 38 to 40% of the gospels are speaking to Jesus doing, performing a physical healing. Mm -hmm. So if physical healing, if physical well-being 
is not important, then we can look at that statistic and find that the son of man was wasting his time. Right. But I don't think he was. Right. And so it's like, I'm, clearly I'm gonna three, I'm going to waste my time. I, I don't think that's part of the, of the, you know, plan that God had. <laughs> right. He had three years of public ministry. Right. There were, there's, different passages that say he and everybody in that town was healed either it was a really tiny population there was like 10 people in that town or that took some time <laughs> so it is important and god is interested in it and he does want to see us have that vitality and 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 i think the other really important factor to to realize is you're extremely important you're extremely valuable you are worthy and what god has put on your heart to do what God has gifted you in gets to be expressed in this world is a unique part of who he is that only you can bring. And if we don't have the energy and vitality, if we are too bogged down by our health ailments, then we're just not able to show up in the ways that God has designed us to show up. Absolutely. Like my mantra is shine girl shine because we reflect the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. Like that's Amen. why we shine. And it's, it's these things that we're allowing to tarnish our shine mm-hmm. that can be health, that can be, you know, lies, it can be whatever. Mm-hmm. Having to now get through and, and scrub those clean. So Robin, how is, how can somebody say, you know what? Okay. I'm ready. Like I'm ready to work with Robin. How does that look? Yeah, we've got a very simple application process. You can just go to madewellhealth.com forward slash apply. And there's a whole page with information more about my process. And even really speaking to, is this you? Are you someone who actually has issues with, you know, your ability to partner with God? Do you have issues with being consistent? Do you have issues with being someone that can actually, you know, see the ways that God is working in your life? And I, I I care a lot about working with the right kind of person. So I know that I want to see every single body that comprises the body of Christ healthy and well. However, (laughs) (laughs) yes. However, there's only there's everybody's called to a specific thing. There's, there's another health coach that maybe Julian you'll have on here who is the right fit for this person. So for me, I care really about those Jesus loving women who are like, I, I'm done with the chronic dieting cycle. And I also see within whether that's your, your parents, your grandparents, your family, there's some genetic factors that I'm not interested in having. I don't want to walk into chronic disease. So those are kind of the, the, the groups of people that I work with. I'm, I'm done with the tr- chronic dieting and I'm not interested in chronic disease. And so all of that information is there on that site. Now, I also love to work with those who feel like they don't have the time, the emotional capacity, or the ability to get those healthy habits in place because it just feels too overwhelming. It doesn't feel possible. It doesn't feel like you can make it happen. So with that said, I actually have a masterclass I would love to gift your audience with. And it is called how to prioritize your health amidst the chaos without added stress. I just put it all in the title there. (laughs) I mean, let's just make it clear, shall we? Yeah, that's great. Super duper clear. Um, and so, yeah, for those who, you know, really find the, the struggle to like, where do I even start? What do I do? How, how do I, you know, actually plan things out? Or I I want to do, I have the desire to do it. I don't know where to start, or I kind of, I know what to do. I just need to do it. And I don't, this is the masterclass for that. So that one, you just go to madewellhealth.com forward slash prioritize. Yeah. And we'll have all those, those links in the show notes. So it's, it's easy clicking for you people. <laughs> Super easy. I love an easy click. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> Remove the barriers to entry. So yes, those are two great ways. You can also, I'm, my desire is always to try and add as much value as I can. I know that not everybody's going to sign up as a client. I know everybody's not going to sign up for my next course, but I want whatever I'm communicating and giving to hopefully encourage someone to partner with God in a way to have a nugget. They're like, I can run with this. So I also post a lot on my social media on Instagram and Facebook. My handle 
is Robin underscore R H I N E M C D. Of course, also in the show notes, I'm sh- sure. Yeah. Um, and so I always try to post there as well, just encouragement and value. And I love connecting with people there, regardless of again, you know, whether we we work together or not. Right, right. Because I mean, that's what Kingdom Connections are all about. Like we're exactly here to support and encourage, even if there's mm-hmm. no like financial exchange. You know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're gonna do a quick speed round before we end. Are you ready? I'm ready. I didn't even tell her about the speed round. What's up? I know. (laughs) Okay. Well, okay. I do have to ask this question. Do you you eat any kind of junk food? Oh, I love this question. I'm so glad you asked that. Yeah. Okay. Right now. (laughs) So super quick. I'm going to say this. So I just started doing a 75 basic. If you're familiar with 75 hard, it's hard. It's crazy. It's like 75 days of whole 32 workouts a day and a bunch of other craziness. I'm like, no, thank you. However, I decided that I wanted to participate with my friends who are doing this. And so I'm like, I'll do a 75 basic. And so I said, I was going to eat a clean diet plus sourdough because I just got sourdough starter. And I'm just really excited. I understand the craze. I know why people are obsessed. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, and so I have been eating far more bread sourdough options than I have probably in years in just the last month. Here's the crazy thing since doing this 75 basic, which has included some movement or whatever, I have actually unintentionally lost like four pounds. And my point in sharing that is I really think it's important for people to understand you don't have to eat quote unquote perfectly. And to define that would be another, you know, several minutes we're not going to get into, but you don't have to eat perfectly to be healthy and well, what it comes down to is intentionality and quality of food. And so I, I'm not interested in restricting myself from eating the things that I want to eat. What I am interested in is being, being very much aligned again with my calling, my purpose and what it, what it takes for me to eat in a way that I can live that out. So that does mean I'm going to eat really clean most of the time. Right. That also means I'm going to enjoy the sourdough cornbread that I made to have with my protein rich chili and it was right. bomb <laughs> and right. being able to use quality ingredients so I'm big on cooking it yourself yeah. so if I'm gonna have a muffin a cookie cinnamon rolls cornbread I want to make it myself I want to know what's in it I want to use organic ingredients and honestly at this point when I go out to eat and I order a dessert most of the time what I make is a thousand times tastier and I know it's cleaner. So yes, I do eat what most would consider unhealthy. I primarily do so in ways that I'm preparing it myself. And I'm kind of at the point where I'm not really like, I don't want to eat certain things that are processed and packaged because, because I just don't think it tastes good. I feel like I was like, let me give you some sourdough cookies. Let me give you, (laughs) let me show you the goodness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So Love it. okay. Speed round. What is your favorite health food? This is controversial steak. <laughs> she says amazing. Okay. What is your, um, go-to like movement exercise to just like get that stress release out? What do you do? Weightlifting. I want to be so strong and buff and people who think that you can be bulky, from lifting weights. You can't, I'm trying. It's, it takes far more effort and energy than I have. (laughs) That's awesome. Who is more of the disciplinarian, you or your husband? Surprisingly, my husband, I thought that I would be, Mm. but I, I, I got to work. I feel like I'm loosey goosey. I'm like, like, there's something I'm cute. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I am. I'm honestly shocked by it. I'm honestly shocked. (laughs) All right. What is your go-to verse or book of the Bible? Uh, Philippians four, four through six. Um, finally, brothers and sisters, what is it? Um, with thanks and thanksgiving, pre- bring your requests and make them known to God and the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. That was huge during that story where I experienced with my dad, with my pregnancy my mom used to quote that to me as a little kid. I, and it is, it has really impacted me and stuck with me. Yeah. And it it so goes to show like how much that's 
that has produced fruit in your life because you mm. are every single thing that you're doing, you know, mm. and you're surrendering it and you're giving it over in Thanksgiving because mm. you know that you expect to see it this side of heaven, the goodness of it, but yeah. you know that you are going to, your children are going to experience it and your children's children, like you're doing so much more in, in seeding generations to come with decisions you're making today. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. Remember the best version of you begins on your next level of faith. Bye for now.